too. And remember, steer clear of the river. Where does it go? Nobody knows. And if you fall in, you ain't coming back home. But electricity, I just don't get it. Even the electricians don't know how it works. All they do is replace the broken parts. Dude, you need to control your temper. When anger controls you, you get... Unintended consequences. Like hitting your father. I didn't mean to. Exactly. <laughs> oh dear, Poppy. It looks like you've ruined something. So this writing looks like the writing in school books. But so much is missing. Instructions, stone marked with an E, if orc. What in the world is if orc? <laughs> well, orc could be fork. Or dork, lork. Work. Orc could be work. And if could be pipe. Pipe works. Dude works in the pipe works. Dude, dude. Yes, Lena? I found this document. My sister destroyed it. But it's important. Look at the writing. It looks like the writing of the builders. Where shall I ever do it? 
Cunningham play with these arrows? You speak like a coward, for you stand there with a good you bow, while all I have is a plain blackthorn staff with which to meet thee. Now never have I had a coward's name in all my life. I will lay down my trusty bow and arrows, and go cut myself a good cudgel to test you with. And I will abide thy coming, and joyously do. I will fight, and you will fall under my staff. Never did the knights of Arthur's round table meet in a stouter fight than did these two. So they stood, each in their place, neither moving a finger's breadth back for one good hour. And many blows were given and received by each in that time, till here and there were sore bones and bumps. Yet neither thought of crying, enough, or seemed likely to fall from the bridge. I do believe, in all my life, I have never seen such a hand at quarterstaff. Aye, nor have I. Best of all. <laughs> <laughs> this must be so. 
some thief who has stolen his meat. Nay, when did you ever see a thief who gave away his goods so freely and merrily? This must be some reckless son who gave away his father's land and would live merrily while the money lasts. Aye, that must be. Now may heaven bless us and all the good food and drink in this house, and may all butchers be as honest as I am. <laughs> <laughs> son, and perhaps I may lighten this purse of it. You are a jolly young man. I know you like jolly young men, for didn't you gladly give Robin Hood a bright golden arrow for his own? <laughs> now may heaven preserve us this day from a rogue men call Robin Hood. Nay, set your mind at rest. I know Robin Hood well, and well do I know that you are in no more danger from him than you are from me. <laughs> These are my horned beasts, good master sheriff. <laughs> How do you like them? Are they not fat and fair to see? No, fellow, I wish I were out of the forest, because I do not like thy company. <laughs> Right 
maybe the ladies in the audience will think it's a real lion. I think the lion should introduce himself and explain that he's really an actor. <laughs> <laughs> for oats. <laughs> or hay. I can fancy some hay. I can send the berries to fetch some nuts and berries. I'd rather have hay. <laughs> but actually now, I'm feeling very sleepy. I think I'll have a snooze. <sighs> I'm here. Don't start without me. What's oh, What oh, happened? I'll tell you later. There's no time now. The Duke has already gone to the temple. Soon the wedding will be over and the entertainment will begin. Quick, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> myself. No more ado.
you all for coming to our seventh Theater 3500 production, Peter Pan. This is a tale of extreme imagination and adventure, of epic battles and ruthless murders, of silly little children and very naughty fairies. It is about evil pirates and friendly Indians, but our story begins far from this wonderful place. We are in London at Bloomsbury, number 14, the house of Mr. and Mrs. Darling and their three beautiful children, Wendy, John, and Michael. Hey, where are you? Oh, have you found my shadow yet? <whistles> I am not a silly donkey! I've found it now. What are you? An animal? No, not I. The 
then you're a night monkey. <laughs> then you're a boy? I am. I'm Peter Pan. Are you ready, boys? Aye! Aye! Fall back. He's mine. I've 
told you uh, all about my love for Countess Olivia, and I, I'd like you to call on her today on my behalf. But won't Eddie turn away like the others? Well, if you are, don't stand for it. Wait at the gate and insist on seeing her. And if I succeed? You can tell her everything. How I adore her. How I swoon with longing all day long and can barely leave my bed for love sickness. It'll sound so much better coming from you than from any of my other servants. I don't see why. Well, it's because it's you're so young. She won't feel threatened. Why, you burn the hair in your chin and your voice is like a woman's. Oh, but you're sure to like you. I'll do my best, my lord. But what a tough task. I have to go matchmaking for the man I want to marry myself. So, Toby, what are you doing there? You look as if you've been up all night. You were drinking, weren't you? With that oh. scoundrel, Sir Andrew. Heavens above, it's no wonder my lady's had enough of men when all she ever sees is you two. I'll have you know that Sir Andrew Augustine is the perfect gentleman. Yeah, he's not just here for fun, you know. He intends to propose to my niece Olivia. Oh, what nonsense. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sir Andrew, time for breakfast. Why not? Leaving her out like a clown or something. He must be mad. 
Well, then, if you really indeed are a woman, will you be my wife? 